My name is Daniel Ruiz. I've been here in Mexico for about 17 years. I was, as a baby, taken to the United States. I was there till 22 years old. I was raised in the United States. I felt like an American citizen. I grew up on American TV, American culture, and never thought in my head that I was in not American citizen. And then got deported for marijuana charges. I was okay with my deportation. I knew that it had broken the law, and now I'm here in Mexico. When I got here, I had to learn the culture. I had to learn basically everything about Mexico, and it was pretty difficult. It took me a while to adapt. I can't say that I fully adapted. One thing that's difficult being down here, knowing that when your family's all gathered together, celebrating Thanksgiving or Christmas or any family event, and seeing the pictures, hearing them on the phone, or just knowing that they're there with your whole family and not being part of that, it's really heartbreaking. And it's something that all deported people share. We all feel the pain that we're not there with our families on special moments. When I got here in Mexico, I knew that if I went back, what chances were they for me to stay there without getting deported again? For me, it was just not right, so I just decided to stay here in Mexico and just deal with it. And so I've looked for good jobs and I found them working in different areas. I worked at renting out jet skis and it was pretty fun on the beach. And I worked in the call center business and that's where my life took off. Right away, I learned how to move up the chain in management. And later on down the road, I uh, met a friend and we started our own business and I became the vice president of a company. We hired a lot of people that were deported. I got to meet them, I got to understand their stories, and later on down the road, I wanted to do more for them. I could help in their job, but I couldn't really help them in their personal life. One day, I was in my office, and this girl named April came in and asked to use the phone. And I wasn't really busy at the time, so I said, go ahead. She worked there before, but she was having problems. She wasn't doing too well. And I'm sitting there thinking about how many people out there would like to use the phone. So I looked outside the window and I looked over the city and said it'd be nice if I could just put a place and have a couple phones and maybe some computers and help out people that are deported. Also, I was thinking how to get business on my own. So I left that company and I started my own business. I decided to do both, help people and run a business. So. I started this business, the company's called Kingpin, and we do promotional items for businesses. We sell promotional pins, keychains, t-shirts, all through the United States, and we teach people sales. So the people that we hire are people that never had experience on the phone, and we teach them sales. We teach them customer service. We have a good training program where we can get anybody off the streets. And so when we first got here to El Chaparral, around the border, we saw people in front of us that were eating off the trash cans. So we started feeding them. That's why we got the office next to the border. And we found out there was a lot of people that are deported or uh, immigrants that are basically doing really bad around this area. So we started helping them out. We started providing a free phone. We provided a computer for they can log in and, and contact their family through Facebook, Messenger, or email. And we started giving free water, uh, free food, free clothing. And also, because we have the facilities, we are doing computer classes and other activities like adult education. And basically, I figured we have the location, so why not try to use the location for more? Try to help as much as we can, not only just think about making money, but actually make a difference in people's lives. And we're trying to get other resources through other organizations like shelters, medical, psychology, to basically put an end to this suffering from being deported. So we have other services that we provide. We have a bathroom, we have lockers, because there's a lot of people are just wandering around the city with a backpack. We have showers. So we're trying to provide all the necessities a person would need to be able to, to get ahead in life. I've been investing into this nonprofit organization through the business and we don't really have other resources. So I've been pretty much doing this on my own and my thinking is just build it, work it, and then have people just come in once it's built. What we want to do is just put a lot of work into it, a lot of love, a lot of heart into it, and then let it flourish. 
We're trying to create a voice also for deported people. We're trying to organize social events where deported people can come together and just create a, a unity in the voice in society that we're not criminals because here in Mexico there's a lot of racism and if you're deported they think you're a criminal. So we want to make sure we show people that we're good people and that we're just trying to make our lives here and do good and just helping each other out. The whole idea of what we're trying to do here is just help people understand we're in Mexico and we have a new opportunity, a new beginning. And the first thing you have to do is just put your feet on the ground and understand that life goes on and just be strong and look for the future in a way that's going to be positive and it's going to help you out. It's going to help your family out. But if you're suffering, and then they're going to be suffering. So the most important thing is for you to be stable and try to do your best to adapt to society and just try to be happy. Because if you're happy, then your family's going to be happy.